My name is Rebecca Demarest, and I am a fellowship-trained, board-certified, pediatric and young adult primary care sports medicine specialist at Webster Orthopedics, who's been in practice for about 10 years. I see kids and young adults with sports medicine injuries, including musculoskeletal issues, so things like knee and shoulder pain, along with medical sports medicine issues, like concussions. Three used to be the magic number when it comes to sports concussions. If you came to see me 10 years ago and had had three concussions, I would have told you that you should not play contact sports. What we know now is that it's a very individualized approach to how to manage and treat each person's concussion. So there are some people with one concussion who it may be recommended that they not return to contact sports, and there may be other athletes who have had several concussions where we feel that it may be safe for them to try to return. It's very individualized. So when you come to see me in the office for an evaluation for a concussion, I do a very thorough history and physical examination, including a neurologic exam. Most athletes will have a normal physical and neurologic exam, so I focus a lot on the history in terms of the mechanism of how you sustain the concussion and what symptoms that you're having. Some athletes may undergo specialized computer neuropsychological testing. What we use in this office is impact testing. And what this testing does is it helps us see how your brain is functioning. So it looks at executive function, processing speeds, reaction times, things that we might not be able to pick up when they're impaired on a regular examination. Ideally, you've come into the office before and we have a baseline test for you so that we can compare your results from before you had your injury to now that you've had your injury. So most people with a sports concussion take anywhere from 7 to 14 days to recover from a concussion. However, it can take weeks or even months or years to recover. It's very individual. We know that younger athletes take longer to recover from concussions, so we're usually a little bit more conservative with our younger athletes. So athletes who have sustained a concussion or there's a possibility of a concussion should not return to play the same day. You need to be completely symptom free at rest, so you need to be back to school, doing all your normal activities and acting normally before we would consider letting you go back to physical activity. And once you're completely symptom free at rest, we do a stepwise approach where we slowly introduce physical activity, usually with the help of your athletic trainer at your high school. We slowly have you advance back into cardiovascular activity, non-contact activity, eventually practices, and then games. For some people, this can take five to seven days, and for other people, it can take longer if need be. If you have symptoms that come back when you've started the stepwise approach, you need to stop and rest again and wait until you're symptom free before you start again. Athletes who return to play too soon while they are still having symptoms of a concussion risk sustaining further injury. They risk either having prolonged symptoms or symptoms that never recover and they never return to normal, or they can risk having a second concussion. There's an entity that's called second impact syndrome that's debated in the literature, but the idea is that somebody has symptoms from a concussion, goes back to play while they're still experiencing those symptoms, and has a second injury or a second concussion. And unfortunately, they walk off the field and they have a very traumatic experience where their brain herniates and they can die. We obviously don't want this to happen and we want to protect all of our athletes, so we focus on really making sure that you're completely symptom free before we would advance you back into activity. The best method to prevent a concussion is education, to teach people what to look for when it comes to signs and symptoms so that they can remove an athlete from play. Unfortunately, helmets and headgear have not been shown to protect against concussions. The best tool that we have is education to make people aware of the signs and symptoms of a concussion.